please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government on MEC scholarships 2019. There are two mathematics exams, one for social sciences mathematics A and another for natural sciences mathematics B. This problem is from the 2019 mathematics B questionnaire. The answer key and the original questions are linked in the description. Problem 5 of 1. When the absolute value of x is less than or equal to pi over 2, the maximum of sine x plus cosine x is blank, and the minimum of that is blank. We just need to recall the graph of the sine curve and the graph of the cosine curve. It will also be helpful to remember this Pythagorean identity. First, let us plot the trigonometric functions in the interval that is given. This is the given interval. This is equivalent to this. So, we will plot the functions in the interval negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to pi over 2. For the sine x, or rather the cosine x function, that is this black curve. We know this shape from trigonometry. It peaks at 1, and the endpoints here are at 0. For the sine curve, that is this blue graph. Again, we know this from trigonometry. It is 0 at 0, and it is minimum at the endpoint here at negative 1, and maximum at the endpoint here at 1. Now, we can try to predict the graph of sine x plus cosine x. At the end point, at this end point, cosine x is 0 and sine x is negative 1. So, sine x plus cosine x, which is the red plot, would be here at negative 1. At the other end point, cosine x is 0 and sine x is 1. So, the sum would be here at 1. Here at the center, cosine x is 1 and sine x is at this point here, 0. So the red sum is here at 1. Because sine x and cosine x does not break anywhere in this interval, it is continuous, we can connect the dots to produce this red curve. We notice that there's a bump here. The reason we have that is because the sine and the cosine, the sum of them, is the same for here and here. And we notice that this part here, the sine curve increases more than the cosine curve is decreasing. So, we have a slight increase. The same could be, could be said about this part here. And so, by just connecting the dots, we know that there will be a maximum somewhere here at the middle. Now, we can start thinking about the minimum and the maximum of the red graph. The minimum is obvious. It is at this point. So, we write that minimum is negative 1. The maximum is somewhere between this point and this point. However, we also know that the sine curve, this blue graph in this interval, is actually just the mirror image of this cosine curve here. And so we have two solutions to find this maximum. First is to exploit that idea of them being mirror images. We use symmetry. The other idea is we use the trigonometric identities. First, let us focus on the first solution, using symmetry. In this problem, we can use symmetry because the problem gives us a hint that there is only one maximum value in this interval. And therefore, if there is only one maximum value, that value must be the same distance from this endpoint 
to that of the distance to this endpoint. That's because the blue curve is a mirror image of the black curve. And so the distances must be the same from here to that single point and from here to that single maximum point. And that happens when we are at the midpoint. The midpoint is the location that is equidistant to the both endpoints. So that is 0 plus pi over 2 over 2, which is pi over 4. We just substitute this value into the x's here. We obtain this maximum value. This second solution works because we know that both sine of x and cosine of x are positive in the interval where the maximum is located. We know that it is located in this interval because of the graph we drew in the previous slide. So let us let y equal the sum here. Because all these values are positive, they are maximum at the point where their squares are also maximum. So we can say that y is maximum when y squared is maximum. We are not saying that their values are equal at maximum. We are saying that they happen at the x value, at the same x value where they are maximum. So in this case, we need to find the x value of y squared that makes it maximum. And that x value will be the same value that maximizes y. So let us do y squared because this is easier. If we square both sides of the equation, we obtain this. We notice that this and this reduces to 1. And this becomes this. Again, we are looking for the x that maximizes y squared because that is the same x that maximizes y. So, we have this expression. Now, the maximum of this expression happens when sine 2x is also maximum. The reason for that is again, sine 2x is positive in this interval. So, now we see that the maximum of this happens when we have the maximum of this. But we know when sine 2x is maximum. In this interval, that happens when 2x equals pi over 2. That is when this is maximized, which is also the case when y is maximized. So we solve for x. We see that x must be pi over 4. That means that this function is maximized when x is pi over 4. So we just substitute pi over 4 here and we obtain again square root of 2. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!